looking at the timing in a player's shot. Now we're looking at a youth player here, and this is really where we want this timing to start. So that as they get older, the players get stronger, they move farther out from the hoop, the timing is already in place, and it's just a matter of more repetition, not changing something in a shot. So I'm gonna break this down for you the best that I can. But if you have an older player, I'd certainly do this with older players as well. The number one thing really that I work with my varsity players and my high school players is the timing in their shot. So if they don't have this timing component down, this is what we need to fix. I find that uh, they usually have pretty good form, they usually have pretty, pretty good foot placement, those sort of things, but the timing is, is what's missing. So if we start this at a younger age and move it all the way up through the program, we're gonna have much better shooters. If you missed the one, two, three, four shooting video, I'm gonna link that so you can take a look at it. This is using three and four. So we've gotten rid of the one and two because our player has pretty good form. Now, this particular player is shooting on a smaller hoop, so it's age appropriate, about eight and a half feet. Uh, we can't see the hoop in the video uh, because I, it doesn't matter if they make or miss. We're looking at the form right now and we're looking at the timing and things. So what we have here is the player's ready in position three. We'll see that the player does dip the ball just slightly but not too much. I'm going to talk why that's important here in just a second, but let's watch the video. All right, so when the player dips it, we'll see him come down right here. That's not too bad. Having a little bit of a dip, I mean, as players get stronger and they get used to this, that dip will go away more and more, but that gets just below the chin level. It's not getting down by the waist or the knees, and that's what we really don't want to see. When players dip the ball to their waist or their knees in order to generate power to shoot it, we know the timing is off. And what I mean by that is the hips movement when you bend down and we can see the player here is bent down in a shooting position when they go from the shooting position into jumping into that shot or into into straightening out when they shoot it their hips are only going to move maybe about a foot your older players might have a little bit more movement than a youth player would but there's only about a foot difference between where the the hips will farthest point down to their farthest point up the ball, we need to minimize the amount of movement. If a player dips the ball down to their knees or down to their waist, they are then going to have to go from that level all the way up to their release point above their head. And it's going to be a matter of maybe three feet or four feet, depending on the height of the player. So we want to minimize that as much as possible and make the timing of the hips coming down and then going back up the same as when the ball goes into the shot. Let's look at it real quick. There we go. He's down. He's going into his shot. Now, from this point, he's going to start going up into that shot. This is where we're really going to pay attention to hip and ball placement because both are moving up at the same time. There we see he comes up. And right about the time where he is fully extended with his hips, he's also releasing the ball. So the timing is pretty good right here. Now, I'm not worried too much about the follow through and everything else. The hand position isn't bad, but that's something as a youth player is going to continue to work on and get better. And that's where the one, two, three, four shooting holding our follow through and just getting lots of repetition is going to come in place. When we take out some of the earlier stuff, the one and the two of it, we just go to three, four shooting, the players feel a little bit different. They feel a little bit awkward. They're, they're trying to figure out which muscles to use. Sometimes they shoot it way too far. Sometimes they don't shoot it far enough. So it's, it's where repetition comes in. But we want them to get used to that three, four shooting, and then we can work on where our follow through should be, um, where we're landing after we jump, all of those sorts of things. But for the scope of this video, we're just looking at the timing of it. And let's go ahead and watch it one more time here. Player dips down, ready to come up. 
and there the ball he's almost extended the ball is just coming off his hand and there the timing is pretty darn good with it so this is something that I encourage you to look at with your older players as well as your younger players and make sure that that timing is correct okay I will give you one quick thing and when working on the timing start your players close in but don't start them too close. Older players do not need to shoot from four to six feet away. A younger player like this, that would be appropriate to have them start close and then move their way back. A player who has the strength and the power and probably has decent form already, you want to start them, I'd say, roughly 12 feet away from the hoop. As they make, whether it's two in a row or three in a row with good timing, you step back to 14 to 15 feet, make two or three in a row, step back. Again, now we're at the 16, 17 foot, make two or three in a row, and we keep stepping back. If they miss two in a row, then you have them take a step forward. So wherever they, if they got back to the 17 foot mark and they missed two in a row, have them step up to the 15 foot mark. If they miss two again, have them go up to that 12 to 13 foot range. If they make two, have them step back make two in a row, step back. You're trying to develop a consistency there. Now, I understand that a lot of coaches, well, we don't shoot the 15 to you know 19 foot, nine inch three pointer. And, and we don't shoot that in our program either. But as I'm developing a player's shot and consistency and strength and timing, I'm not going to jump from 15 feet to 20 feet. It's gonna to be too far but 15 feet to 17 feet to 19 feet to 20 feet, small increments, now you start to, to help players develop that consistency that they need. So coaches, hopefully this helps you kind of see the timing and why we want to hold our ball high, why we don't want to dip it at all. If you will focus on this with your players, and, and we use this as a cue. So this, what we would say here, and we'll watch the video one more time, is all right, everybody in position three, and we're going to go three, four. And then they get their ball back, and we, we do it again. Three, four. So I'm giving them that cue of going right into it. Okay, and then we'd have them go three, four, hold your follow-through. I want to see everybody's follow-through. I want to walk around. I'm going to check them. And that would be the next step to developing your player. Okay, once we've done that a few times and I like what I see, then I kind of let them go with their partners. All right, we're going two in a row. Everybody's starting at 12 feet. We're stepping back one step every time we make two in a row. If we miss two in a row, we'll step back forward, but we'll never go any closer than 12 feet with our varsity players. With youth players, I would start that in closer. I'd start maybe six to eight feet, and then we would move back from there. So those are... That's the way that we teach it in our program and it's been pretty successful.